Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all who are participating in today's webinar. I trust that all are keeping fine in this difficult period of COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank the organizer, Global Alliance for Avis Control, and Marex Foundation for giving me this opportunity. This year's theme for World Rabies Day is to share facts and not fear. We know that rabies is a fatal disease, but it is 100% preventable. We have tools like effective vaccines against rabies for both dogs and humans, and it has been demonstrated that a sustained mass of vaccination can interrupt the disease transmission. We have a global initiatives and a proof of concept for rabies elimination. So what we need is a commitment and maintain the momentum. Rabies is a classical one health disease and it is important that countries must develop a national strategic plan using one health approach. And if the plan should have a clear roadmap and a plan of action. If a country has a national strategic plan approved by the government, there is an opportunity to advocate support from the government and from the international partners to implement the plan. In many countries, drug vaccination campaigns are mostly organized and led by the government veterinary services and NGOs. We need to look at how volunteers, communities, private veterinarians and other stakeholders can be engaged to sustain the vaccination campaign. There should be continuous capacity building activities to maintain the momentum of rabies elimination program. Training on dog vaccination, bite case management, rabies surveillance, and data management are also important aspects of rabies control program. We understand the iceberg phenomenon and this is very much relevant to rabies. There is still weak surveillance in many rabies endemic countries in the world and only a fraction of the cases are reported. When a reliable data is not available, it affects the decision making to invest in the rabies control program. It is important to enhance rabies surveillance, improve data availability, so that the policy makers, stakeholders and partners can make a decision to invest on control program. Awareness education is important to share the facts about rabies. Most human deaths from rabies occur due to lack of knowledge and as a result, the animal bite victims do not visit hospital for treatment. Children are at high risk of being bitten by dogs and exposed to rabies and therefore awareness education should be focused in children. It is good to learn that some countries have incorporated rabies modules in school curriculum and this would enhance rabies awareness among the children. Rabies networking and partnership is also important to collaborate the rabies control activities. Since rabies is a transboundary disease, rabies control requires a regional approach. Now we have a regional network for Africa called Paracon and for the Middle East and the Eastern European countries called Maracon and for the Asian countries called Aracon. These are being coordinated by the GAC. This network is important to share the experiences and expertise to control rabies in the region. In the Americas, the Pan American Health Organization coordinates the rabies elimination program and there has been a significant achievement in the Americas and they are moving from control to elimination stage. Rabies control efforts should not be left to a single sector alone. Rabies control requires a multi-sectoral engagement for sustainability and to take ownership of the program. I am coordinating a rabies elimination project in Namibia and I wanted to share how Namibia is scale up the elimination program. Namibia is located in the southwest of Africa as shown on this map and Canaan rabies is endemic only in the northern communal areas of Namibia. The sporadic human deaths due to rabies are also reported in this region. Namibia is committed to rabies elimination and they have developed a national control plan in 2015 using a one health approach. And to implement this plan, a rabies project was co-financed by the German government with technical support provided by the OIE, FLI and other partners. First, a pilot project was implemented in one region on a 
on this red shaded area in 2016. And based on the success of this pilot project, the mass drug vaccination campaign was then rolled out in the entire region of the northern community area since 2017. The stakeholders' meetings and training of the vaccinators were conducted to kick start the campaign. A community support is very important for rabies elimination project and a series of awareness campaigns were conducted to educate the public and the school children. The project area is very vast, extending thousands of kilometers, and it is very difficult to cover for mass dog vaccination. So the surveillance data is used to identify the rabies hotspot areas. Then the vaccination is targeted on the rabbit rabies hotspot areas to break the transmission cycle. The vaccinated dogs are also tracked using a data logger supplied by GARC, and by using this tool we can understand where the vaccinated dogs are living and whether the vaccination program covered the hotspot areas. This map with red dot shows the location of rabies positive cases in dogs and the dark dot shows the location of vaccinated dogs. Large number of dogs are also vaccinated at the cattle crush pen during the time of food and mouth disease vaccination campaign. This ensures the vaccination coverage in remote areas. Crush pen is an established structure where farmers bring their cattle for vaccinations against food and mouth disease and other diseases. There are several crush pens within the community in Namibia. Cross-border collaboration is very important to control rabies. We know that there is no national border for the rabies virus and the dogs. Namibia and Angola share a very long international open border and therefore a consultative cross-border meeting was organized between the veterinary services of Namibia and Angola and during this meeting they developed a rabies control plan for South Angola. The OIE and the Namibia also provided training to the Angolan partners and as a result the southern province of Angola implemented a mass dog vaccination campaign vaccinating thousands of dogs during 2020. This is how we should build the capacity of other countries and initiate a rabies control program. The project review and planning meetings are also conducted frequently to discuss the project activities. This project improved the capacities of the veterinary service of Namibia. It is strengthened the One Health collaboration, enhanced rabies surveillance, and also improved the community level awareness about rabies. After the start of the mass dog vaccination campaign, the number of human deaths reduced from around 23 deaths in 2015, that is before the start of the project, to only two deaths in 2020 and is gearing towards elimination. Of course, there are several challenges and problems that affect the project implementation. The main challenges are the very vast and scattered settlement, inadequate workforce, national budget constraint and recently due to COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, the Namibian government is committed to rabies elimination by 2030. The detailed information about the project implementation and the lessons learned so far is discussed in this publication. The key achievement for Namibia is that for the first time in history, the OIE World Assembly of Delegates this year endorsed the official control program against dog-mediated rabies for Namibia along with the Philippines. This is a great move forward in the fight against rabies. I am sure other countries will be inspired by Namibia and the Philippines to develop their national strategic plan and request for endorsement. Now I would like to share some of the key achievements at the global level. The first phase of 0 by 30 was completed and the first annual progress report was published. We are now in the second phase of 0 by 30 to scale up the elimination activities. Last year, the United Against Rabies Forum was launched by the Director Generals of FAO, OIE and WHO to accelerate the efforts needed to deliver on the vision of 0 by 30. The UAR Forum provides a platform for rabies stakeholders to work together with a common vision for rabies elimination. So far, two working groups have been formed and they have already started developing strategies and tools 
to support countries with the elimination program. The Global Rabies Coordinator has also been appointed and is coordinating the UAR Forum. Therefore, there is a global response and in this way we can build and maintain the momentum of rabies elimination. The UAR Forum is organizing three Zoom webinars during the time of World Rabies Day and that are on 27th September, 4th October and 11th October. If you are interested to attend this uh, webinar, you can register at this link and this link will be shared on the chat box. Vaccine is one of the critical components of rabies elimination. To support the mass drug vaccination campaign, the OIE Rabies Vaccine Bank was established in 2012. So far, 26 million doses of dog rabies vaccines were distributed to 38 countries in Asia and Africa. The GABI has also included human rabies vaccines to scale up post-exposure prophylaxis, but it is on hold for time being due to COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the rabies elimination efforts in many countries in the world. It is hoped that the countries will again prioritize and fund rabies control activities when the COVID-19 situation is stabilized. If the rabies control activities are not prioritized and remain neglected, the momentum that we have gained so far will be lost and it will derail the collective efforts to achieve the global target of 0 by 30. Finally, I would like to thank you for your active listening and let us all join hands to keep the momentum going. Once again, thank you to the organizer for giving me this opportunity.